Some children are struck with the most awful diseases and it always seems so unfair. But for one condition at least, there's some hope of relief. The potentially fatal skin disease, Epidermolysis bullosa, causes skin to be so fragile that even a cuddle from a parent can cause enormous pain and suffering. There's new hope of a treatment though, thanks to Australian researchers. Natasha Johnson reports, but first a warning, some viewers may find images in this story distressing. Visiting Sydney's wildlife world with his mum and grandpa, Billy O'Brien looks at first glance like a robust seven-year-old boy. <laughs> oh, he's only got to your yeah. head. <laughs> but he's one of the butterfly children, so named because their skin is as delicate as a butterfly's wings, prone in the worst cases to breaking and blistering at the slightest touch or the mere rub of clothing. Very, very... Cuddling him and all that, you know, you just got to be careful because you will break his skin quite easily. So what do you think of a disease that makes it hard for a mother to cuddle her own child? Terrible, horrible. Yeah. Ow. Good boy. His skin disease is likened to third degree burns. And every day, Billy O'Brien's blisters are drained, bathed and bandaged in an hour long ritual. But even then, this cotton wool kid can't live like other children. Billy would like to join in with other kids and, like, you know, ball games, run and chase, wrestling, but he can't do that. Hey, this is hard. Caused by a genetic malfunction, epidermolysis bullosa, or EB, has dealt Rebecca O'Brien a double blow. Both her sons were born with a severe form of the disease, which causes damaged fingers and toes to fuse together and can also produce blisters in the eyes and internal organs like the esophagus, making eating impossible for some. Infection is a constant threat and Rebecca O'Brien's elder son, Jaden, died earlier this year due to complications from EB. He was very tough. Jaden was in um, a wheelchair. He was fed 18 hours through a nasal gastric tube in his um, nose. His bandages used to take me three, three hours, sometimes four hours. This would have to be the worst disease ever to actually lose a child at eight and a half. It's estimated that 1,000 Australians have EB, about 150, like 26-year-old Nikki Howe, have the worst type, which often leads to aggressive skin cancer and early death. The skin fragility in EB can vary a lot from milder cases where they get blisters on the hands and feet to severe cases where every part of the skin can be blistered off. Even when they're in utero, they can rip their skin off from their little legs rubbing inside the womb. EB patients are missing the proteins or the glue which bind together the two layers of the skin, the dermis and the epidermis, meaning the skin keeps splitting apart and doesn't heal properly. Some are very painful and some are just... I think I've gotten used to it over time. Apart from government subsidised dressings which cost up to $6,000 a month, there's no treatment. Your left arm always gets a lot more wounds than the right arm, doesn't it? But new research this stoic young woman volunteered for has produced a surprising glimmer of hope. In a world-first study, Professor Dede Morell and researchers from the University of New South Wales devised a randomised double-blind placebo-controlled trial to test the benefit of promising experimental cell therapy. This was a completely accidental and unexpected result and we were flabbergasted at the beginning to think, well, what's happening here? 0.25 in there. It involved multiple injections of either donor skin cells or a placebo solution into a dozen paired wounds in five EB patients. Chronic ulcers started to heal. The most impressive was one patient who'd had large thigh wounds for four years. When he came back after two weeks, each wound on both thighs had gone in by several centimetres and we'd never seen anything like that. I hesitate to use the word miracle, but at the time that's how it felt to us. That shows where the wound is today. Some of them would 
had been there for months and just didn't want to get better. But with the injections, they started to heal. So what was your initial reaction when you saw those wounds healing? It was exciting. And you can see that already within two weeks... The Professor Morell had hoped to see accelerated healing in wounds that receive the donor cells. Healed by eight weeks. But later, when comparing those with the wounds that received only the placebo, there was an extraordinary scientific twist. We found that these very cheap placebo injections were just as effective as the $10,000 expensive cells at regenerating the wounds in the patients with recessive dystrophic EB. Can you please measure the size of those two wounds now? Now the question is why? My current theory is that the trauma to the skin induced by the needles, rather than whichever solution we were happening to use, is something which is signalling the skin to regenerate. How it's doing that is not yet known, but there is some preliminary work from Japan showing that trauma to the skin can induce stem cells from the bone marrow to come and regenerate the skin. The research has been presented at international conferences and an abstract published in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology. Professor Morell's study is a very important uh, milestone. John McGrath, Professor of Molecular Dermatology at King's College in London, pioneered the cell therapy and is now conducting his own placebo-controlled trial. While acknowledging Professor Morell's results, he believes cells may yet generate greater healing than the placebo. It's okay. My experience having injected cells and placebo into more than 20 patients with EB is that there is a difference in terms of scale of response, uh, but uh, we'll wait and see. Professor Morell has now moved on to trialling placebo injections alone. While wound healing didn't last beyond six months in the original study, she's hopeful the placebo may eventually become a cheap, viable treatment. <laughs> is it tickling? It's a hope the butterfly children and their families are hanging on to. I pray every day for a cure for this horrible disease. It would be really good because I just, I could live a life like everybody else. Natasha Johnson reported.